this piece of ash uh, isn't really good for anything involved in a, in a chessboard, but I can certainly get checker pieces out of it. So I just need to uh, make an equal piece, size piece of walnut for the rest of the pieces. bought this to um, to use to make uh, holes in doors when I was hanging doors um, in this house um, inch and a half I think that's the perfect size for a checker piece Looks like I'll have uh, plenty of room to do two rows of inch and a half circles. Um, I need 16 and I, I, I can get I'm easily 10 so I'll have some extras to play around with. There's nothing here but grunt work left to do. All I'm trying to do is just ease the edge a little bit. Nothing fancy. Using 180. I have to admit, I did the bulk of these upstairs watching TV because it is mindless, absolutely mindless. Okay, what I want to do is I want to find the center of each of my checker pieces. Um, I mean, I could measure three quarters of an inch in at various angles and come up with it, but I, I thought I'd do the way that I was taught in geometry class by squaring the circle 
and then just drawing lines from corner to corner. I'm sure everybody has a much better way of doing this than I do. But I'm just winging it. Using my good old blue painter's tape. So if I do this, and then I do this, there's the center. Okay, so the plan for these checker pieces is to drill a hole. And once I drill that hole, I am going to insert a, a decorative bronzy tack. That's enough. I don't think it will go through. I mean, it just misses, but... Anyway. Before I insert the tack though, I'm going to use this hole uh, to help me apply finish to all, uh, one, two, I guess three sides to this thing. So that I don't have to let it rest on a flat surface, it'll be, it'll be uh, suspended. So, stay tuned for that. Okay, this is an experiment. I have no idea whether this is going to work. But I've got these, um, these plastic feet that you put on the bottoms of small pieces of furniture. I've got the hole drilled. I'm going to insert this. Then I'm going to submerge it in, I'm using Minwax Wipe on Poly Clear Satin. Submerge it in that, let it sit for a little bit. Let me get what I forgot to get in the first place. Small brush. Then I'm going to take it out and let it drip off. And then I'm going to kind of grab it with this and just put it over there. And then we will see <laughs> whether I will get a nice smooth coating of um, Wipe on Poly out of that. I may not have to use this because it seems to be seeping in well and um, it won't give it too much of a coating. But again, we'll see. If it doesn't work, um, I'm going to have to come up with a plan B, which uh, right now uh, I don't have a plan B. Okay, well I have run out of um, those little plastic feet. And I've also run out of coffee, so I am going to let these 12 dry. And meantime, I'm going to pour this back into here, and uh, we'll do the next 12. I am getting rid of the um, the excess on the bottom. As the sides have 
soaked in so much that they're basically dry, so I can grab them. I don't want to have some big thick drip. Uh oh. Don't want to have some big thick drip at the bottom of uh, what's going to be the top of these pieces. Just evening it out, getting rid of the excess, as you can see. No surprise, the, uh, the black walnut is soaking it in quicker than the ash. Kind of knew that would happen. Ash is such a very dense and hard wood. It's probably why they used it to make baseball bats, right? Well, it's been an hour or two, and uh, I think it looks pretty good. No globs, no blobs. I'm going to give it some more time to dry. I, I, I'm in no hurry. Um, plus, I may go over it with some, uh, uh, you know, 500 grit sandpaper before I put another coat down. Maybe just some uh, double aught steel wool. That might be all it needs. But this is okay. I doubt any professional woodworking shop would do it this way, but I don't pretend to be that. It's just me in my little basement. Yeah, we're good. And again, I don't know if I've mentioned it, I am not going to be in production mode to make checkers. This is a, this is a one-time project because I gave my checker set to my two uh, Virginia grandsons so that they could play checkers. And so my my chessboard or my gaming board upstairs um, needs a set of checkers. So you know why buy it when obviously we can make it. Okay, the second and probably final coat for these. After doing it um, 24 times the first coat, I've sort of gotten this down to a, a sort of a science. The trick is to um, go in after about 20 minutes of having it just sit there and taking the brush and just even everything out. So that you don't get those big drops on the bottom. And then after about half an hour, I can actually pick them up by the sides because they'll, they'll have dried to the touch already. And then I can go over the, the two surfaces top and the bottom surfaces and uh, make sure that everything is nice and smooth. I once worked uh, when I was in college on a, on a day job. I was sent by a temp agency to a louver door factory where for eight hours all I did was load little wooden slats into this machine which ran through the machine and turned into louvers. I did that for eight hours and um, minimum wage and I swore to myself I would never, never, ever work in a factory like that ever again or all I did was the same damn thing for eight hours, you know, with lunch. I think they even gave us a break. But there were guys in that factory who, who that was their job, that was their day job. So I think about those guys sometimes.
Anyway. Okay, the rules say that pieces should be placed on the dark squares. So that's what I'm doing. Right now I'm just wiping down the, um, the wax, the orange and beeswax polish. Because you don't need a lot of it. Just, you just want to, you know, just like you polish any piece of fine furniture, you just want to have a very thin even buffed coat. I don't know if anybody's heard of steampunk, but it's kind of like a steampunk look. And there you have it. Um, this is sort of a, a, a matched set. This is a uh, chessboard I made out of black walnut and ash and from the same um, supply of wood I made the pieces out of black walnut and ash so they all kind of fit together. I have one grandson who only likes to play me in chess and I have another one who only wants to play me in checkers so finally got both grandsons covered. Anyway, this is um, Keith Minion in a very echoey finishing room um, in Keith Minion's studio. Thank you for watching.